powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. And I'm Janelle Slade. No changes in the Montana legislative makeup this session, at least not after today's recount here in Billings. Republican Representative Frank Fleming will keep his seat in House District 51 here in Yellowstone County. This after today's recount did not change the outcome of the race. Democratic challenger Daryl Wilson requested a recount after he trailed Fleming by 17 votes in the November 6th election. Following today's recount, Fleming's margin actually shrunk by two votes. The final tally shows Fleming with 1,840 votes to Wilson's 1,825, a difference of 15 votes. Fleming told us he respects Wilson for asking for the recount and he feels the process was fair. Now, tomorrow, officials will be recounting the votes in the Yellowstone County District Judge race between Julie Pierce and Ashley Harada. That recount to start at 1 o'clock. Pierce requested the recount after unofficial results showed her trailing Harada by 119 votes. A vote on some crucial rule changes in the Montana House for the upcoming 2019 legislative session delayed today, but the tug of war over that could affect key bills in the 2019 legislature apparently far from over. Now, the House Rules Committee was scheduled to debate and vote today on whether to endorse the rule changes, but when Democrats on the panel tried to address the issue, majority Republicans quickly adjourned the meeting. The proposed change would allow a simple majority vote of the 100-member House to move bills blocked in committee to the House floor. Now, under current rules, that requires a 60-vote supermajority. <clears throat> the minority Democrats, along with some Republicans, though, say it's time to let majority rule rather than allow GOP leadership and a minority of Republicans to block bills they simply don't like. But the chair of the Rules Committee, Republican Derek Skies of Kalispell, says it's just not that simple. Why does members of the majority caucus want to pass rules that weaken the majority caucus? If, if everything is back down to 51, then, then only a few can really sway the votes of the remainder. I want to make sure that in that process that the electorate of Montana is served first, and then second, that the legislative body isn't damaged by a process that we didn't thoroughly vet out. Skeezes committee delayed action on that proposal until the 8th of January, which is day number two of the upcoming 2019 legislature. Former Vice President Joe Biden was in Missoula last night speaking at an event at the University of Montana. Now, during his visit, he gave the strongest indication yet that he may run for president in 2020. Biden said, quote, I'll be as straight with you as I can. I think I'm the most qualified person in the country to be president. In addressing his qualifications, Biden said the issues facing the nation today are the same ones he's been working on for a lifetime. Biden added his decision will come within the next two months and he will make that decision together with his family. He made the comments during a book tour stop here in Montana. Steve Bannon's speaking engagement at the University of Montana in Missoula set for next week has been canceled. Bannon was to be the keynote speaker at the Athenian Parisia Free Speech Forum set for December 11th. But the organization's website today says that due to the unavailability of Mr. Bannon, the Missoula event postponed until further notice. UVN spokesperson Paula Short says the reservation to use UM facilities was canceled after the school received an email from organizers overnight. Bannon was President Donald Trump's former chief strategist and is a founding member of Breitbart News, a far-right news opinion and commentary website. How much did President Trump's multiple campaign visits to Montana cost U.S. taxpayers? There's a new report that says at least $3 million. The new website, Quartz, compiled the cost of flying the president on Air Force One to political rallies across the country this election year. It claims that cost alone totaled $17 million, with almost $3 million attributed to the president's four trips to Montana. The president visited Great Falls, Billings, Bozeman, and Missoula this year, campaigning for Republican U.S. Senate candidate Matt Rosendale. Rosendale ultimately lost Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester. So far, the president's campaign records show no reimbursement to the government for those Air Force One costs. The court's report says the president's July 5th flight to Great Falls was his second most expensive campaign trip of the year, costing $1.2 million. It also says that total does not include the cost of Secret Service or other support personnel. The Trump 2020 campaign did not respond to questions today about reporting the expenses. 
Senator Steve Daines is back in Montana after his visit to Afghanistan. He says the United States is exactly where it needs to be and needs to stay in Afghanistan. The senator connected with Montana soldiers while on his tour. The Montana National Guard troops deployed have been there since June and are expected to return mid-March. In a conference with the media today, Daines said withdrawal would put America's safety at risk. The situation is complex. Uh, a U.S. withdrawal, in my opinion, would have devastating consequences and would put American safety at risk. Uh, we have uh, direct evidence of, uh, of ISIS-inspired plots that are going on in Afghanistan to directly hit the homeland. And if it were not for the U.S. forces there in Afghanistan, the risk of such would be greater. Senator Daines also encouraged President Trump to go visit troops overseas, adding it means a lot for them to see the support. A shooting on the Billings South Side last night still under investigation. Billings police responding to the area of 4th Avenue South and South 28th Street just after 10 p.m. And that's where they located a 19-year-old man who had been shot two to three times. The victim was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. There were no other injuries reported in the shooting. Police say they've yet to make any arrests or identify a suspect, but say they do not believe there's any threat to the public at this time. A heads up from the Wyoming Highway Patrol. Patrol says scammers are calling the public, claiming that a relative has been in a crash and has been arrested for driving under the influence. The caller then says the relative needs cash for bail and attorney fees. Now the calls are coming from fake phone numbers made to look like they're coming from legitimate law enforcement offices. The Wyoming Highway Patrol says it will never request payment over the phone. Many of you are familiar with Q2's Foodie Friday segment, which highlights a local eatery in our region. But sometimes while businesses are cooking up a storm in the kitchen, Guess what? They're also cooking up a helping of hope for the community. Q2's Russ Riesinger has more on how Cajun Fatties is bringing Creole caring to the Magic City. Cajun cooking can certainly conjure up an appetite, and once a quarter, that's the only thing that patrons really need to worry about bringing to this Billings restaurant. Today is a day where anybody can come out and they can eat and, you know, not... Not worry about money. Cajun Fatty's owner Ashley Robichaux came up with the idea for a pay what you can afford or pay it forward day. Originally as a way to give veterans a break, but then decided to give others a taste as well. You'll notice a lot of good southern food on the Thank menu here that you don't normally find in Montana, like alligator, catfish, jambalaya. But you'll also notice something else. There's no price. Um, it's a feel-good thing for everybody. There's no prices on the menus. Um, nobody can, has to come in and feel guilty or ashamed that they can't pay. We don't even ask. They don't know what the prices are, so we just say, how much would you like to donate today? And for veterans, there is no charge. It's on the house. I just suggested we come here, and I wasn't even aware that this was the night that they were doing it. I did not know that uh, there wasn't going to be a price on the menu. I had no idea. Uh, happy to be here <laughs> and partake. Oh, it's wonderful. These things, wow. Shrimp? Yeah, terrific. And if you can afford more, then lots of people will throw an extra five in the pack and that'll kind of offset whatever. I mean, we take a little loss, but the rewards are so much greater. I've never seen it done before, but that was awesome. It was, it's great for the, the veterans. It's great for the people, the ones that can't afford very much. In Billings, Russ Riesinger, MTN News. Thanks, Russ. Mm, uh, it looks wanted, good. Doesn't it? <laughs> By the way, if you want to take part in the next event, Ashley tells us it'll be happening in March of next year. Still to come on tonight's 530 News, where's the beef? Well, for many, it should be in the trash after another salmonella outbreak. And in sports, Scott has the unusual balancing of golf and wrestling for Q2's Athlete of the Week. And coming up in the weather, the wind's going to pick it up a little bit tonight. Plus, we have a chance for some snow flurries moving in the state overnight. We'll tell you all about that coming up in a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.